Look at the quality of this. This is unbelievable. Oh my fucking god. Like, it, it, it's like whenever I see this world, whenever I see this, uh, this stuff here, what it really makes me think is like, oh my, like, I, I feel the same as I felt whenever I was a kid. Now, with the advent of Unreal Engine 5 and Nanite Micro Polygon Geometry, I, I don't it's understand this, possible to use how this, this is possible. Quality content. CD Projekt Red is building a brand new Witcher Saga with UE5. Oh, we, we're not, we're, we're not about to be able Epic to see it, are we? Started. It was, no uh, way. Shift. We've been working to distill our scanning experience and technology into an easy-to-use phone app, bringing the gold standard no. of photogrammetry straight into your pocket. No, we're bro, no. We're calling this app no. Reality Scan. Give me it no way. It guides you through the no, scanning process bro, in AR to shut ensure up. optimal quality. And the community has built some amazing things in it. Let's take a look. So this is shit in Unreal 5? Yeah, damn, I hadn't seen this. I didn't even know this was gonna happen. That was, damn. So this is all in Unreal 5 right here. Oh my god. Oh my god, yeah, this is gonna be probably yeah, a new Witcher game. Uh, Ashes of Creation. A, a lot of games are using Unreal 5. I think one thing that I really find impressive about Unreal 5 is the skin. It sounds weird, but like it's something nobody's ever done right. But I feel like Unreal Today 5 does it right. Today we're launching Unreal Engine 5.0 to all developers. It's oh, been wow. battle tested in Fortnite Chapter 3, launched last December. Cool. So download it today and get started. What's most exciting now is that real-time 3D is bringing industries together. It's too loud. Unreal Engine 5 is okay. the common medium. Among game developers, 48% of announced next oh, generation console titles are powered by Unreal. We watched Automotive that. designers, fashion designers, and architects are doing everything from design visualization yep. to brand activations and entertainment crossovers. Film and television producers are using Unreal for virtual production on set and for final pixels on the movie screen. Then they're bringing their content to games and live events on a mass scale. We're seeing the emergence of a new medium connecting people around the world live and shared experiences. Whoever you build today is a stepping stone to bigger things in the future. So come join us on the journey and we'll build this future I together. I don't know about that. Next up, I'd like to introduce Kim LeBerry, CTO of Epic Games. Okay, here we go. Hello everybody. I can't believe it's been eight years since we shipped Unreal Engine 4. And seven it's been years a long since time, we made it free right. for everybody to use. Since oh, then, yeah. we've seen huge growth in engine usage. <laughs> yeah, I could turn that as off. Well as many other industries. I, I guess we don't need the subs, right? This incredible right? journey has afforded us the opportunity yeah, to work okay. with some of the best creators from all over the planet. It's the work which has driven us to keep pushing the envelope to the point where we are today, which is the release of Unreal Engine 5. One of the founding principles awesome. of the company is that we bring the lessons we learned from our own game development back into Unreal. The scale I think that's a really good way to Fortnite do things. Since like Epic actually makes level. their own games too. Putting all that work back into the engine has made Unreal Engine way better across all platforms. It looks good. I joined Epic because I've always believed that real-time technology it has the good. power to revolutionize the creative process across all industries. Being able to make instantaneous decisions within a Stupid. near photoreal interactive environment is utterly transformative. I wonder how easy it would be to make something in this game. And see them immediately in, this, I mean, in context. Be so this cool. is a better, quicker, and much more efficient way of creating content. It's been fantastic to see our customers like using really the hard, engine right? in so many different ways, from indie creative projects all the way up to AAA games and even movies. But for us to really be sure that Unreal Engine 5 has achieved the goals we set for it, to really change the way interactive and linear media is made, we needed to push the engine to a new extreme. Okay. Oh my god. And that's god. how the Matrix Awakens demo came about. It's the Matrix. How oh. do we know what is real? I was oh, fortunate what? enough to have worked in the first three Matrix movies at a time when visual effects was revolutionizing the movie business. True. Having the opportunity to work on I another Matrix that project happened, was and push technology yet again was really special. Oh my God, It was a privilege so for us to bring Ooh, the Matrix universe skin. to a whole new generation of viewers and players. We wanted to show that high-end visuals at a massive scale were possible in a living, breathing, and believable That's what's impressive world. about it. And we wanted to show that a player could be immersed in an exciting cinematic scene that would normally only be possible in a blockbuster film. Yep. What's been fantastic is seeing how a fully interactive set can change the process of filmmaking. In what can be described as life imitating art, we actually filmed the cinematic sections of the demo inside the Matrix City we had built. Oh, where our wow. artists would drive cars, set up stunts, and place pyrotechnics all inside a fully simulated world. 
And because so it's, it's, a like in the, it's in the, the, the real world. Now, we can then place optimal cameras in the scene after the fact to give maximum cinematic impact. Unreal Engine 5 isn't just about making existing ways of doing things faster. Wow. It's about finding whole new approaches to transform the way content is made and experienced. Nanite micropolygon geometry allows for billions of triangles on the screen at any moment. And Luma's real-time global illumination enables highly realistic lighting. They combine together to generate oh real-time content at a level that would have seemed like magic only a few years ago. The scale of it is For what's so of impressive the to Mega me. City, we didn't have a huge environment team, so we had to build it in a really smart and efficient way. We wanted to create a large-scale city with fidelity and complexity beyond right. what is typical in an open-world game. And for this, we deployed procedural content creation techniques, including partnering with our friends at SideFX to use Houdini and Houdini Engine. So that's like an all Developer in the city. Efficiency is a recurring theme that goes beyond Unreal Engine and into our other products. MetaHuman nice. Creator and Quixel Scans show how we're enabling creators to make very high quality content. I should try to do that, before. like the, the person maker Pulling thing? Pulling together the city for try the Matrix Awakens cool. and bringing it to life would have been impossible without these tools. Unreal Engine is revolutionizing how creators tell stories and how people experience them. Mm -hmm. Enabling Big developers God, to leverage yeah. one set of assets for whatever type of content they can dream up from games to Make linear animation, yeah. and even to live action shows and movies. One of the most important aspects of creating the Matrix Awakens demo was our commitment to release the city as a sample content. I remember when We want to show out. in a step-by-step -step manner how we created this world together and to provide a starting point for others to make their own worlds, tell stories, even build new games on top of this incredible digital city. That's what's so nuts to me Unreal about Unreal Engine it. 5 is the foundation of next-gen content creation. So what are you waiting for? Go make something amazing. I bet if I tried to use that, I would like, uh, it would take me like an hour to make a rock and then I'd have to go watch a YouTube video. Like, I bet this shit's actually like super complicated to use. Starting today, it's never been easier to bring your creative vision to life. We built UV5 by looking at each individual aspect and asking ourselves, what technical hurdles can we remove to help developers put creativity first? We redesigned the Unreal Editor UI, making it easier to use with a streamlined, modern look, so you just put a rock keeping you inside you the 3D world that you're building. And we built tools for animation and I'll modeling directly this. into yeah, the yeah. editor, enabling developers to fine-tune and iterate cool. on content in context without round trips to external packages. Lumen frees developers to create this dynamic worlds one. with high-quality global illumination. Nanite relieves developers from worrying about draw call, polygon, and memory budgets from a geometry perspective and our new open world tools allow developers to collaborate in a single massive level. That is just, bro, like that faster, desert was just UE5, lit. We're shipping Lyra. Well, literally, right, with Lumen. It's oh, a complete end-to-end like, -end -end really networked cool. multiplayer game project that is an excellent foundation to build a game upon without having to start from a blank slate. It's built from modular components, utilizes epic online services for matchmaking, and is designed to run on PC, console, and mobile. With Lyra, you can jump in, customize it, add new content, and begin playtesting from day one. That's cool. To see how easy it is to build on top of Lyra, let's jump in the editor with Zach Parrish. Okay, so here we are inside oh of the God. Unreal Editor, and this is the Lyra project. And this is the Expanse level, one of three different levels that ship with the Lyra project. And I'm just gonna jump right in and play the game. So I'll click the play button and okay. boom, we're we're playing Lyra so it's like Fortnite, the editor. basically. And I know there's a bot waiting for me up here, and he's gonna try to get the shotgun. Damn, bro, he's nervous. It won't go well for me. Come on, I can do this. He may, he's missing, okay, man. Well, oh my saw god. That coming. It's probably man. gonna happen a lot throughout this demo. Ooh, they should have programmed that bot to miss. What we're gonna be focusing miss. on is how we can take Ooh, this level and modify him to miss. it and really start to make Lyra our own. But before we do that, I want to call out the lighting. This level is lit primarily with just the sunlight. As a matter of fact, if I move the sun around, oh my God. you can see how Lumen just takes that light and naturally bounces what it around the, the scene. Fuck? And the light is influenced by the surfaces it it's hits. Like a, so if I was to take the floor, for example, and just drag and drop a new material on it, like a like red, Especially for, for example, like the game to you can work, now see there's like, red and light good bouncing FPS. around the scene. And if you really just want to crank it up to 11 i could drag and drop like this neon green color that oh i God. imported from the early 90s and you can see that the sunlight hits that and yes, floods the whole scene with green light now i would never leave it that way because that looks awful no it doesn't shut in up in addition it to awesome. bounced light 
Lumen also allows us to illuminate our scenes using emissive materials. So here's a ball that has an emissive material on it, and it is casting light into the scene, but it's hard to see with all this sunlight. So let's just take the sun and tuck it up underneath the level. And now you can see that the ball actually is casting light and there is no oh light actor God. there. This is all happening by way of the material, thanks to Lumen. In fact, if I take the material and change its color, we can oh. change the color of the light. And if I increase Bro, that, that emissive good. value, we can actually flood the scene with more light. And I get some sunglasses. <laughs> and in the process, make a, a sphere that's actually painful to look at. Yes, it's about now, right. Now, that light is dynamic. You can see as I move the ball around. Bro, I should try to make a game. That lighting is following along. So let's take a look at modifying our level. I'll just tuck the ball up here into the corner. Okay. And let's bring the sun back. OK. Now, Lyra yeah, was designed make a, from make the game. ground up for you to build your own games on. And to help with that, we've created a series of tools to help you out. So this looks like a regular static mesh of a window that I just duplicated off the back wall. That's but true. Actually, this is a procedural mesh. So if what? I get it into the middle of the room and then right click on it and go to scripted actor actions, I can swap this out to its generated mesh. And now we can see a selection of handles that I can move around, and you see how that updates the object. So I can move the window around. He's playing the Fortnite. Shape. He's editing. And if I go over to the details panel, I can increase the. But wall's it's Fortnite width. in real life. We could increase its height. Uh, we could actually adjust. Not really you know what? real. Let's take the opening and we'll change it. But you know what to I make mean. this into like a bunker that I can kind of hide behind to give me some protection from these bots. So we'll make that narrow. We'll slide it yeah, down yeah. a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll increase the width oh, by just wow. a little. And when I'm done, I just need to convert this into a regular static mesh. I'll do that by clicking Generate New Static Mesh, and then right-click and choose Swap to Static Mesh. And boom, this is a mesh just like any other that you'd use to build a level. Now, of course, we're not limited that. to just duplicating existing meshes. If I wanted to, I can bring in fresh ones from the Tools menu that's uh, included in the Lyra install. And you'll find that this is full of a series of these procedural tools that are all built using Blueprint on top of the already existing modeling tools in the Unreal Editor. So I Jesus. can bring in this panel and just move this handle around to quickly drag out a ceiling for our little bunker. That and was so easy. That, just right click and swap that over to a it's static like, mesh. I, I, I probably and I do need a way to that. get up here, which I'll admit, like, I just watched like three just clicks. for me to show you this really cool procedural stairway. So if I drag this in, check it out. Yeah. I'm going to rotate it around and aim it where it needs to go. Okay. And then we're going to move it way far back. And obviously these stairs leave a little bit to, to be desired in terms of where they're going. But if I grab the handle in the upper corner, watch this. We can increase their length. Oh, we can increase my their God. height. So he's going to have it go up to the top? And the system just automatically generates stairs for me. It just does it. So boop, we'll just connect those right up. Maybe make a couple of quick edits. There we go. That looks pretty good. And we can also make them wider, so we'll just slide that out like so. Holy I don't know why it needed shit. a sound effect. And, and then the reason, white lines like align too. Look at that. Now we can also change the number of stairs as well. So I can take the step height, and you can see I can adjust oh that. God. We can make these into floating stairs. And these uh, are just like make sure that they are like creating some collision. Dynamically change. And I, I have to mention this because it just it makes me so fundamentally happy. But if you get right down on the stairs, There's we dirt. can actually turn on bevel. And we can add just a little bit of bevel to the edge of the stairs, which really helps when the the light. That actually makes just. it look so way better. Holy shit! If we're shit. done, if we're happy, we. We can just right click and go back to scripted actor actions, swap Jesus. that out to a static mesh, and there we go. We've built a new part of the level. Of course, it does have this really cool prototyping grid material, but let's make it fit the scene just a little bit better. Uh, we'll add some color to it. We'll bring in some red for the top area, and we'll make the stairs blue because that's what I have handy. And there we go. Now, It'd be great if I also had some armaments, and we have access to the entire gameplay library that makes Lyra. So here is a weapon spawner. And by the way, this is defined entirely in Blueprint. So if I wanted to open this up and change its behavior, I could. Uh, I wouldn't even have to write a line of code, but all I'm gonna do is change some settings. So let's take the weapon definition, and we'll set that over to rifle, and I'll take the color and set it over to pink so that everybody knows that this is my rifle. It's epic. And I'm the only one who gets to use it. And if, if I wanted to, we could just test this out. So let's hit play. Oh, and shit, I'll now he's in the game. Run up the steps. And I know that bot Holy is coming. I can fuck. feel it. Come on. 
Come on, don't lose. Okay. Don't lose oh, on oh, stream, man. Don't, don't lose on right. stream. Well, let, let's take our bunker. Yeah, get one we'll rifle. Go. Now I got cover. Ah, here we go. Yeah, that's right. Come on, come on. Don't lose. I don't know it's why I'm adding really sound effects. I can't help it. Okay, okay I was see, about there to you say. go. Just like that, I was able to change the overall flow of the level from something very open and frenetic to some place where I have cover, where I can pick up a weapon and really try to, to control the situation. And I did that using procedural tools that are already included with Lyra. Now, of course, we're not so limited like to that. So, like, Fortnite's a gateway drug to using Unreal. We have the Marketplace, we have Sketchfab, we have Quixel Bridge, there's even ArtStation. And you can bring in content from those and really make Lyra look like anything you want it to be. Where the hell is that coming? Where the hell that come from? So, here's a yeah, first you do Fortnite, then you do this. From, uh, a previous project. So, I could just drag this in. And, of course, this looks great. It has a lot of fantastic detail. Totally but it fits it doesn't in. quite fit the overall flow of Lyra. So... Uh, let's just fix that. I'll just drag a new material on it. Surely no art director would have a problem with that. But the point is that you can just add whatever content your heart desires and really start turning your Lyra levels into anything you want them to be. Oh my God. So now you've seen how you can build your own games and experiences inside of Lyra. And this was using just one of That's three insane. modes available inside the project. We have elimination, which Link is like a video. standard It's on match. YouTube, it's a YouTube live We have control, stream. which is like a capture and hold mode. And there's even exploder, which is like a top-down party game. And all of this is available to you today. God That's damn. That's great, Zach. Thanks. Even though this is the first release of UE5, we've made sure the engine is ready to ship projects from day one. We're proud of the demos we built to drive development we of saw Unreal this Engine one. 5. This one was cool. Lumen in the Land of Nanite, Valley of the Ancient for our early access release, and The Matrix Awakens, available to players around the world on Xbox Series X and Series S and PlayStation 5. But to really put the engine through its paces, last December, we shipped Chapter 3 of Fortnite on Unreal Engine 5 across all platforms. PC, PS4 and PS5, Xbox One, Series X and Series S, Nintendo Switch, and Android. We completed a rigorous process comparing the performance, memory, and stability of Fortnite on UE5 with Fortnite on UE4, and we were able to make the transition smoothly without any major modifications to Fortnite's code or content. That's what happened and the with Fortnite Ashes team was able too. to take advantage of the new editor and workflows. Because they talked in about UE5. that. Having taken the plunge ourselves, you can be confident that UE5 is battle-tested and ready for production. Now, our goal has always been for all developers to be able to take advantage of UE5, whether you're already working in UE4 or starting anew. We made sure the path to transition from UE4 to 5 is straightforward and well-documented, so you can hit the ground running with all of the new features right away. That background looks this is just so the beginning. incredible. Future updates oh, will I include want to see new more features, that. improvements, and optimizations. And we're arming you with that an was arsenal crazy. of libraries and additional tools to put the power of creation in your hands, day one. To preview some of these incredible tools, let's go to our friends at Epic Stockholm in Sweden. Okay, let's see it. Hey everyone, Teddy here. High quality photoreal content is incredibly expensive and time consuming to create. Oh my God, wow. Our mission is to bring you vast libraries of high there quality assets already made for you and awesome tools for creating your own photoreal content oh, and you put digital that in humans scrapper. more quickly than ever before yeah. so that you can concentrate Holy on what matters fuck. most, creating amazing experiences. I founded Quixel over a decade ago with the vision to build Megascans, a massive library of ready-made photoreal assets to simplify digital world creation for developers, all built with state-of-the-art scanning technology. A single such asset contains millions of triangles, and in the past, making use of such high-fidelity content to create billion polygon scenes was limited to the motion picture industry and could simply not be done in games. But now, with the advent of Unreal Engine 5 and Nanite Micro Polygon Geometry, I, I don't it's understand finally this. possible to use How this, this movie-quality content as is to create real-time experiences that are indistinguishable from reality, like regardless of which industry you're in. I've been waiting on this when for a Crystal long time. Make Epic, a cat girl. We immediately made the entire Megascans library I free for use with Unreal Engine and started work on integrating it into the engine itself to enable you to use oh, is that all these incredibly high-fidelity assets it's directly in engine. With the release of Unreal Engine 5, you can now access the world's largest library of the highest quality scans for free, fully Nanite compatible without ever having to leave the editor. With a simple drag and drop, you can instantly stream in full real Nanite content to build 
any world imaginable. Bro, if I was a kid and I saw and this, I'd want to be a game developer. Assets and can't find what you need in the Megascans library or Unreal Engine marketplace. If I was like 12, I would be we going hard on this. this hard, I would be going as hard as I could. Working to make millions of additional marketplace yeah. assets more accessible to developers. We're solving the problem of content creation at scale with libraries of free assets too and now. paid world class assets from creators I'm an old man featuring now. the best revenue share in the industry. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Sometimes you might not find exactly the asset you're looking for and would like to create it yourself. But take it from me, scanning custom assets has always been incredibly hard work that requires a great deal of training. Actually as well pay as to win. Yeah, of course you gotta pay for these. hardware and software. For this reason, we've been working to distill our scanning experience and technology into an easy to use phone app bringing the gold standard no. of photogrammetry straight into your pocket. No, We're bro, no. We're calling this app no. Reality Scan. Give me it no way. It guides you through the no, scanning process bro, in AR to shut ensure up. optimal quality, processes no. all data automatically in the cloud, and publishes the final asset straight to Sketchfab for use what? anywhere. All for what free. the fuck? Our goal is to make it as easy as possible for you to create and share your own custom for real content Whenever no you fucking shit, are you serious? Reason, we also released MetaHuman Creator, a free cloud-based app that empowers professionals as well as beginners to create photorealistic digital humans Holy complete fuck. with hair and clothing in minutes. This used to be incredibly challenging and time-consuming, but now you can create your own digital humans at the quality of the best-looking games out there. So by combining this incredible free creator ecosystem of best-in-class tools and movie-quality content with the power of Unreal Engine 5, oh my God. creating amazing photoreal games and experiences has never been this easy. With all these new free tools, you'll be able to start building an exciting new ways oh to by both the you thing. and the community oh my as a whole. And to tell you more about another great community resource, that is sure. Thank you, Teddy. The community of creators all over the world is something that is very dear to us at Epic. I started my personal journey when I first discovered Unreal Engine 23 years ago. Scan when your I was dick. just 15 years old. I started creating levels for Unreal Tournament, joined this community, and it changed my life, as we've seen it do for so many others. We are excited to provide the engine and our whole ecosystem of tools to everyone, but we're equally thrilled to ensure that we equip creators with the knowledge and support you need to succeed making it as easy as possible to find and share knowledge across the community. With the next generation of Unreal Engine launching, we have been working on a new community site, dev.epicgames.com slash community. The site brings together a number of different community channels and tools to make it easy to find all of our resources in one place, learning content, forums, questions and answers, and code snippets. Wow. The learning section is a centralized, fully open and accessible library of all kinds of courses, tutorials, live streams and tech talks for you to browse through and read or watch. That is so useful. And what I really like you is don't that have to anyone go to YouTube. can write tutorials and contribute to this library of content through an easy to use tutorial editor. I think that lets you is... freely build up your page using text, image, video and code widgets. If, for example, you discover how to do amazing procedural animation using Control Rig to add secondary motion to your characters, you can share those learnings with other devs. The Unreal Engine forums have been fully integrated in order to give you a space to showcase your cool projects, discuss things with other devs, or to find solutions from others. That is incredible. There is also the snippet repository Looks a lot to better share than and store forms. snippets of code such as C++ and Python or text-based assets such as blueprint, materials, meta sounds and so on. For example, in the Lyra starter game, one of our devs made a blueprint setup Make that too. measures the running speed of the player and then uses that to drive reactive music via meta sounds. If you have an interesting setup like that, you could simply copy and paste that from the Unreal Editor to the snippets on the site and by doing so, store things you would like to remember, or more importantly, share with others so that they can use your work as a foundation. And lastly, activity is captured and represented through your profile that you can personalize to represent who you are and what you create. I guess that must be if really useful for developers. Skills, or if you have questions yeah. and you need help with something, that's incredible. simply to show your awesome work or discoveries, Come and join us in the Unreal Engine community My code now, at dev.epicgames.com slash community. 
I'm always so inspired by all the amazing work Things like that, that is being sometimes created by everyone around though. the world. Be curious to see what we happens. We count ourselves fortunate to be able to give back to our amazing community in the form of mega grants and fellowship programs. Today, we are proud to highlight some of the astounding work being produced by the community. And here's just a sample of all that amazing work. Okay, here we go. Let's see the cool shit that people made. Here we go. Oh my god, that's impressive. I that looks cool. I think what's really so crazy about this is how many things, like how much this empowers small developers to create things with like AAA quality. I mean, these are just like random people doing this stuff, right? That's what I think is just the, the craziest thing about it. That's, a, that, that's the best part, I think. It is awesome to see so many inspiring projects from game developers, filmmakers, and creators of animated entertainment lifting now? up yeah. their voices and vision through the power of Unreal Engine. We are thrilled to confirm that all of the amazing studios you see here are a part of the Unreal Engine 5 community, which continues to grow every day. I don't see Activision This represents an insanely talented population of creative and technical talent spanning thousands of people across the planet who are working on just about any and every type of project you can think of. Yeah, and I, I, many of these teams are hiring. This year officially marks 20 years of yeah, Unreal I, I Engine wish, on I Xbox, wish they did. along with unprecedented adoption of Unreal Engine across Microsoft's internal teams who are building games that the industry will be talking about for the next 5, 10, 15 years. And that leads us to a world-class studio that is very dear to Epic. Okay. The Coalition, the team behind What's the this? Gears franchise. They have been instrumental in helping the rubber meet the road where it really counts. It is my pleasure to turn it over to Kate Rayner and Colin Penty. Holy shit. I do. I haven't played Gears since Gears 3. We've been working with Unreal Engine 5 for over a year now, and we've already seen a lot of the benefits. Our relationship with Epic uh, has really impacted positively the Gears of War franchise, whether it's collaboration or Same. calls yeah, of bro, various like, systems or like, uh, Xbox code. 360. We've been creating numerous prototypes and demos, and we're first happy to show the, you uh, like, some I, of the I results the today. One. That's the demo. I think we saw this What before, you're seeing maybe? now is maybe our not. Alpha Point demo. It was I an early not. access demo that we showed at GDC in 2021. Maybe I did some. There I are know. a few different components, an abbreviated character cinematic, and a early large world technical test. The open world tech test was built to test that a few like a things. Scene it was in built Lord to of the test Rings. the landscape system. How does it react with Nanite? Um, how does world Damn, partition bro, streaming like, I, function? The, and how do these all come the together? The spaces and are just incredible. Look at that, man. So MetaHumans came out about That's gonna halfway be through Witcher our 4. character rendering visual tech test demo. And so we immediately sort of stopped what we were doing for a bit, took a look at MetaHumans and wanted to see how it could augment our existing character that we were building. And so we pulled things like materials from MetaHumans and eyeballs and teeth and bring it all together and just see what level of fidelity we could hit, throwing all the latest tech in Unreal Engine 5 at it. This cinematic demo brings the character quality of the new rendering systems, the environment technologies, the new Lumen rendering system, all together to create a real-time cinematic experience that goes beyond anything that we've done in the past. I'm personally very proud of them. They were all sort of labors of love for myself and the art team and engineering teams and really opened our eyes towards what the next gen quality visual bar could be. And so it was a huge learning experience for us. And I think it actually set us up really well when Epic came and asked for help on the Matrix Awakens demo. The fact that we were able to ship this experience on Xbox Series S with all the same features, including ray tracing Admiral that we Boyle, had on the thanks Xbox for five Series subs. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. such a high quality level is really amazing. With the launch of Unreal Engine 5, what I'm most excited for is the developer efficiency that we have for our team. We really are able to deliver a AAA experience that we've always wanted to without the compromises.
Yeah, that's that's what's so that 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 to me is what's really just out, out of this world. Unreal Engine 5, How accessible I feel it is. like is a huge game changer, and I feel like we haven't fully even realized how much of a game changer it's going to be. It basically um, democratizes game development across the world. Exactly. And yeah. Yes, there's yeah. accelerations for AAA developers like ourselves, but it also um, is a great. Uh, entry point for indie dev studios. And so I think it furthers along Unreal Engine 4's vision of everyone can build a project and, and mm -hmm. build a game. And I think it's gonna change the entire industry. Had to go this way after COVID, industry. yeah. Well, that's turned for DK, yeah. Thanks so much, Kate and Colin. The work across Microsoft and the coalition make Unreal Engine better for everyone. CD Projekt Red, our experts this is the Witcher. open world game design, with The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 combining freedom of exploration with compelling storytelling in unparalleled fashion. Through a new partnership with Epic, CD Projekt Red is building a brand new Witcher saga with UE5. Are we, we're not, we're, we're not about to be able Epic to see it, are we? Started. It was, no uh, way. The shift towards, uh, no way we're world about sport. to, we're, we're about to see it. Unreal Engine 5 to our attention. I don't believe it. So there was one demo uh, that happened last uh, year. Yeah, I don't believe it. was a medieval it. environment demo where no shot. at one point uh, there's a notice board that looks strangely familiar to things we've done in the past that has even a sign that says Monster Slayer Wanted. And I'm like, hmm, are they are they trying to tell us, you know, come come over to Unreal Engine, look how great your games can look on there? Look Is, was, that. That, was that whole demo made with that nefarious purpose? I don't know, but it definitely definitely caught my eye. This it opens works. a new chapter for us, where we really want to see how our experience in building open-world games gets combined with all the engineering power of Epic. One of the things that is really important to keep in mind when, when talking about open-world games versus, let's say, more linear games is the possibilities of the things that can go wrong or the, 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 the scenarios that you have to consider are exponentially higher than linear games. Players can go in whatever direction that they want. They can handle content in, <laughs> this in, guy in played Elden Ring. order that they want, <laughs> theoretically. And to really yeah. encapsulate that means that you need a really stable environment <laughs> yeah, he played where Elden Ring. you can be able to make changes with a high level of confidence that it's not going to break in 1,600 other places down Probably the line. ran over to Kaelin. Unreal Engine like, is like a minute. toolbox, which has a lot of features, a lot of solutions already there that allow teams to just try new stuff. The fact that Unreal is used by a lot of teams already in the world, a lot of perspectives are projected into the design of the tools, and that helps the tool to be way more agile. So all in all, it's a really, really cool technology to like prototype and make environments really quickly. Oh, you can really actually like, you can place individual clouds in the sky. Epic and CD Projekt Red are the two companies that, that really want to achieve something great. We won't stop just, you know, by uh, developing some features. We, we won't stop there, yeah? We will continue to, to work together to achieve something extraordinary in the end. You better, you better not do that shit with a fucking uh, uh, cyberpunk whatever again. Thank you to the CD Projekt again. Red team for providing better this not. great insight into why you are placing your best on Don't you mess up The 5. Witcher. We've I mean, touched think upon about how it. great storytellers are turning to Unreal, and this applies to many different disciplines. Whether you're a game designer or a cinematographer, that common language, that real-time parlance is Unreal Engine 5. Few people understand this better than Aaron Sims. Okay, I, never, I don't know who this is. Unreal Engine 5 allows for a creative to be able to create anything that they've dreamed of into reality. It's old song. After being in the industry for over three decades, I've seen a lot of changes in the visual effects industry. I've seen a lot of great innovations, but there's been nothing like Unreal Engine 5. I think it's still new to the community in some ways as far as looking at it as a storytelling tool. A lot of people think of it as a, a game tool or other things. And I think yeah. that there's so much capacity for storytelling. How's that? Show me. Let me see it. So what was exciting working on Valley of the Ancient, it was our first look at Unreal Engine 5. Oh, and so he all made the this. Different tools were amazing. But the control rig is one aspect that I think is really exciting. Oh my. It's so important to actually have realistic movement, not only the look and feel and the lighting of the character, but the Jesus. movement has to be realized in a way that as yeah, the so audience, you believe him? Yeah, no, I mean, but uh, like, and yeah, so his team. You obviously. have all the tools using the control team. rig, the face rig. You're right. And being able to use mocap for me was a lifesaver and to be able to bring it in engine and just re rework a few things here I do and there really and I was done all in Unreal. You know what, you know what this gives me the same vibe as? 
it gives me the same vibe the as like thing, again about whenever they announce the game a lot of fun to be able to play with from like in 64 to gamecube and or what's like, also important uh, is to be able to have access PS1 to ps1 to assets. ps2 the marketplace is a great resource it feels next a lot gen. of free content and we as a matter of fact actually added to that library and it's a creature from our film called the eye calendar deck MediHumans created this ability to have an artist tell their story with a human character and believe them. The fact that the shaders and the textures, the skin, is very realistic. And uh, even the hair and the eyes and everything have really taken uh, the human character to the new level. That's so impressive, When you thought man. about making a film or making I'm a story, it. I think those limits that used to be, you can actually put those away. The fact that a small group of people can create stunning worlds that are believable and characters that have so much emotion and be able to tell sure. compelling stories. There's nothing like Unreal Engine 5. It's an artist's dream. Yeah, Thanks, I'm, I'm Aaron. impressed. We man. are blown away by your work and the sky is the limit moving forward. We are thrilled to be working with so many incredible partners who are using Unreal Engine 5 to move the state of the art forward. In fact, we have one more friend to introduce. Okay, let's see it. Thanks, Dana. Crystal Dynamics is proud to be a part of the launch of Unreal Engine it's Tomb 5. Raider. This new engine translates into next level storytelling and gameplay experiences. And that's why we are thrilled to announce today that we have just started development of our next Tomb Raider game, powered by Unreal Engine 5. Our goal is to push the envelope of fidelity and to deliver the high quality cinematic action adventure experience that fans deserve from both Crystal Dynamics and the Tomb Raider franchise. I feel like, how could you not? We after can't the wait first to take demo, this journey together. You know? How could Thank you not? You. And congratulations again to the Epic Games team. Wow, thanks, Dallas. We can't wait to see Boba what the physics. next chapter of Tomb yeah. Raider holds. Yeah. So, at the end of this very exciting hour, let's recap. Unreal Engine 5 is out and available today, in addition to the Lyra starter game an awesome project you can use to build and ship your first UE5 game. Not to mention thousands of free assets from The Matrix Awakens. Buildings, metahumans, vehicles, everything you need to get going building dynamic open worlds. All of this is free to download and use, and be sure to check out the brand new community hub for even more resources and to help you get going and connect with other developers. Let's build the future together. That is nuts, man. Oh my god. Oh my god, do it on stream. You want me to just make you want me to make Stormwind on stream? Just do that real quick. Just get out of the way real quick. That is nuts, man. I cannot believe that. What the fuck? Like, I mean, this kind of stuff is just unbelievable. Like, I, I feel like what's so what these people were they they were upset that well, I'm reading the chat they're mad because they didn't mention arc bro they gotta make it to where you can't fall through the wall like where you can't fall through the floor in that game they don't gotta think about an engine they gotta think about making the bitch work in the first place what do you mean like that game's a joke man YouTube chat yeah I know YouTube chat's always funny but um anyway let's talk about this I am astonished if you want me to be honest, like I am absolutely fucking astonished by this. This is incredible. Like, let's see, can I get this to play again? Oh no, not this one. Uh, it's 50 seconds. You know what's so crazy to me to about this? With... It, it's so crazy to me that like YouTube has been around uh, in the streaming space for such a little period of time, but somehow they just instantly, like the moment that the live stream ends, you immediately are taken to a redirect to the VOD, and it's like a perfect seamless process that you can click through the stream and the VOD wherever you want, and there's like no friction, there's no loading, there's no ads, there's nothing, you just do it. Like, Twitch, what are you doing? This so how, how like how is YouTube beating you? This but this is awful. What's going on? Yes, a 20k bit rate. So let let's I want to recap some of this stuff, okay? Like I, I especially want to look at the CD Project Red stuff, okay? That's what I'm really excited to see. Like look at the look at the quality of this. This is unbelievable. 
Oh my fucking god! Like, it, it, it's like whenever I see this world, whenever I see this, uh, this stuff here, what it really makes me think is like, oh my, like, I, I feel the same as I felt whenever I was a kid and the next generation of consoles comes out. It's like whenever you were playing Super Nintendo and then the commercial for Nintendo 64 comes out and it's like, what the fuck? Right? It's just like a complete, massive fucking jump. Because in my opinion, and, and again, this is my opinion, I feel like graphics in games has kind of plateaued for the last 10 years or so. Like, if you look at a game from 2012 and you look at a game from 2021, there's not been, there has not been a massive difference. Like, I'm not saying, no, 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 I, a, a plateau... So, like, it, it, it went like this, right? Like, let's say, um, uh, MS, MS Paint. I'm gonna make it NFT real quick. So, it, it was going like this, right? And then you have, like, these things here, right? And this is kind of what happened. And then, like, it was like this. So, like, you could say, um, this is, uh, yeah, N64. Uh, this one right here is, uh, GameCube. Uh, I'm just gonna put GC. Uh, that's the Wii. And, and like this is like the Wii U, right? And, and so like what I'm what I mean to say is like we've been kind of like like we well I'm gonna type I'm gonna type it out, right? We are here, you, you know, and and that's it. I, I feel like it's been it, it hasn't really there hasn't been like that quantum jump, and I really feel like with Unreal Five, I'm looking at the next level. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I feel like we're looking at the next level uh, for the first time in, in a long time. Yeah, I really do. And, and it's like what's so incredible to me about this. And, and this is one thing about Unreal that I, I really think a lot of people just simply don't really appreciate is the fact that they have like this dynamic uh, removal system of things that are not immediately in front of the camera. And the fact that you can render these these spaces without uh, without losing frame rate, because like let's think about it. Like if you saw this picture ten years ago, the first thing that you would think is, "Oh my God, I need to work at NASA to have a computer that can run it." And and, and like I'm not talking about obviously back then. Yes, obviously quality was lower, but like. The graphics and like being able to run games was such a huge barrier to entry, and I think that the real, the the, the real triumph that it seems like Unreal Engine Five has is the fact that it can deliver these high quality, uh, these high quality spaces, while at the same time not sacrificing uh, the the playability, the the frame rate. That is what can it? Yes, it can. Uh, it, it absolutely can. I, I've seen it. Like, so I, I've I've kept up with this whole thing. Uh, I don't think I've ever told you guys this before, and um, I uh, I I usually don't talk about it a whole lot. But um, my uncle is an architect, and um, he knows more about Unreal Engine than I do. Like, he he uses Unreal Engine. He has developed things with Unreal Engine. Uh, yeah, like, this is, this is basically it. And he's been using this and developing, like, a VR Unreal Engine stuff for, like, the last 10 years. Like, yeah, I, like, I, I don't know. I don't talk about that stuff a whole lot, but, like, yes. And, and so I talked to him a little bit about this, too. And, like, it, it like, the, the opportunities that it creates is just fucking insane. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous, man. I, I can't believe this. Yeah. And, uh, new war out? Yeah, yeah, basically, that's it. Uh, Path of Exile shit graphics, Chris Views is upgraded, the game almost died. See, like, I don't think that's it. Uh, I, I really don't think that's it at all. And I think that the truth is that graphics, like, a as a gamer, this is what I want and this is what I am interested in primarily. The main value of Unreal 5 is actually, to me, the graphics are like 30% of it. But the 70% of it is the fact of the playability makes it accessible to more people. Because I think this has been an issue with PC gaming ever since PC gaming started out. Because every, ever since, like, remember, like, you play Warcraft 2 or Warcraft 3 on your computer, and, like, it would take uh, 30 minutes to load a cutscene? Uh, it was awful. So that's what happened, right? Photorealism versus iconic art style. Well, the thing is, like, you don't really... It's always a bad idea to go 100% photorealism because it looks dated. But 
Uh, I think that there are people that try to do it as almost a test of skill, right? How close can we get? And we've seen games that try to make that, that like you guys might not remember this, but like Half-Life 2, whenever it came out, Half-Life 2 was groundbreaking. Like Half-Life 2 had graphics that were just far and away better than like any other game that we had ever seen before. Uh, there were a few other games, like let me think like what else, what were like some of the like the uh, Final Fantasy X, uh, that was another one. Uh, Crisis, that's a huge fucking one. And Crisis was like almost used as a, as a benchmark in general. Uh, and then you also have games like Assassin's Creed and a few other games that are also, you know, like lesser, lesser benchmarks. But uh, originally, like you had uh, Witcher, uh, I think, yeah, Doom 3 maybe. Doom 3 was a big deal. Uh, Quake, uh, Halo 3. Mm, hey, I don't know if I'd put Halo 3 in that list or not. Uh, Metro, yeah, maybe Metro. Um, Uncharted, yeah, a lot of those like open world, especially the uh, more, uh, I don't know really what the word is for it, like more like nature based uh, games, I think they really lend themselves to, you know, photorealistic uh, environments because people want to be immersed in it and feel like they're actually in the forest. Hmm. So what I'm saying here is that what I think is really incredible about this is like we can all look at the graphics and we can all talk about like how cool these graphics are and uh, how incredible they are and you know how good everything looks and, and it's like yes absolutely it looks fucking amazing right 100% like look at this let me go ahead and just go back a little bit like this is this is unreal right this well literally um but like what I think is really, really uh, the the success of this is is the fact that you can run this on a PC and it's not yeah 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 cable thanks for five subs uh, it, it's not scaling up they're not telling you that like you need to have a 4090 Ti that doesn't even come out for two years in order to run this game so basically the accessibility of it and I think even bigger than that. And this has been a big issue with gaming in general, is that you see indie games and many indie games do not have the ability to uh, develop a world on the same level as God of War. And I think that they never really will. But I think this closes the gap so much. This makes it so much more accessible for just a very small developer to do that. And that's what I'm really excited for. I'm excited to see somebody who is in a team of 10 people finally be able to make a game that has at least double A quality. Maybe not triple A, but double A quality. Because I think one of the biggest issues with gaming is that there is not really a lot of competition in the high end space. There's not really a lot of games out there. There's maybe like, uh, you know, a, a dozen, two dozen uh, development studios that are able to make games like this, and nobody else can really compete against that. And I think making this uh, more accessible to more developers, and, and especially how they can trade different assets and coding, et cetera, I think that could create some drama, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, th that kind of stuff is what I find to be the most interesting and the most promising. Does that make sense? Yeah, have you tried Matrix demo? No, I haven't. Imagine Valheim on Unreal 5. Yeah, well, Valheim's a stylized game, so I don't really know how I would approach that. But uh, yeah, just No Man's Sky. What up, Rockstar's new engine? Um, I, I it it depends, right? I mean, yeah, I have, I mean, I have no idea. Game devs are drama queens with sharing assets. Well, yeah, I mean, like I think that most people that have creative. Uh, it's the same thing with a lot of streamers, right? Whenever you're using their clips, they'll get upset about it. Uh, I think it's anybody who's creative can get really, um, uh, really precious about uh, taking their content and using it in certain ways. I try to avoid doing that personally, but I think there's a lot of people that do feel that way. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't use Ascension for stylized games, and that's something that was actually shown earlier, too. Uh, I think they had some other images here, and, and there are stylized games that are being used for this as well. Let me see if I can find it. Um, well, I mean, I guess like that Lyra game is a stylized game. They have like a compilation of like different things that, that people have made. But um, yes, obviously stylized games can be created with this as well. Imagine how good looking a game experience would be if they all worked together instead of against each other. Yeah, uh, imagine how better, how much better humanity would be if the same thing happened. But, you know, let's get back to reality. Uh, shit like Genshin, even on Unreal. Well, that's what's so crazy to me is like, uh, do you think the, uh, what's this here, the female host was real or an Unreal Engine 5 bot? See, like, like, I actually would not have been surprised. Because, like, straight up, so they, they, they showed that guy from Sweden, 
and for a second I thought that he was actually rendered in Unreal because he had like he had such clear skin. I was like, hold up, wait a minute. You're not about to pull a fast one on us, are you? You're not about to fucking do some kind of fucking weird shit. Like, straight up, that's what I thought for, like, literally two seconds. Yeah, because I met a humans? Yeah, exactly. And uh, they should have? I think that would have been fucking funny, man. That would have been such a dope reveal. It would have been, right? I think they should do that next time. Here. Yeah, Unreal, do that. That would be fucking great. And uh, Sweden just an Unreal project? Yeah, exactly. That's what's, yeah, it's not even real, guys. And I uh, love we'll something like Detroit on this engine. Yeah, I know. Check the YouTube channel of the Quixel Mixer. It can be so uncanny valley. Well, I think that's like, I said this before with like Unreal, is like one of the big accomplishments with Unreal, I think, is the fact that a lot of these skin tones are like, obviously, whenever you zoom in and you look up close, it's not perfect. But look at this. So this is the, this was the Matrix demo, right? And here we go. That's pretty fucking good. Like, that—that that is pretty fucking good. You see that? I mean, so, is it like, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But it is getting so close. Eyes still off? That's right. It, it is not perfect. But it is getting better and better and better. And I think that what I'm saying here is that for the last 10 years until Unreal 5 has come out, I really don't feel like we've had that much, like, like there, there, I haven't really felt a breakthrough like this before. Yeah, I, I haven't felt a breakthrough. Is that weird? Yeah, I, I just haven't. Like, that's, that's so fucking crazy to me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it's not going to be perfect, and it will take a very long time for things to be absolutely perfect. But I think that maybe in 10 years or so, especially, I mean, maybe even less than that, maybe even just with, like, better refinement of this engine, uh, you could put, you know, 10 people up against each other, and it's like, you know, pick out two or three that are the fake ones. And I think some people would get it wrong. I do. I think some people would get it wrong. A and that is what's so incredible to me. And on top of that, not only would some people get it wrong. Have you guys seen the, uh, like the fake Tom Cruise thing? Like, let me show you another thing, right? Um, I I'll pull this up. Uh, fake Tom Cruise. So look at this. Very realistic Tom Cruise deep fake. So again, like, there's, like, a, there's a merging and a blending between, like, game development like this and also effects like this. So this is a deep fake of Tom Cruise. This is not Tom Cruise. Look at this. And you can see sometimes whenever he changes his face, there's, like, a single frame of difference. That's not Tom Cruise. Oh, the voice... Where we chop on that? Very sad. He goes, Well, remember how much a polar bear weighs. I said, Polar bear? He said, Enough to break the ice. <laughs> it's the last time I've ever seen Macau Gorbachev. Th that's it's that's not Tom Cruise. What's up, TikTok? This is not He's Tom Cruise. That's cool if I play some sports. I love it. More for the audio experience. As much as the momentum. Hey, listen up, sports and TikTok fans. If you like what you're seeing, just wait till what's coming next. One more, I think. <laughs> this is okay, not Tom Cruise. Magic. And, and like, by the way, see, the hairline is a little bit, the hairline's a little bit off. It's not perfect. And you can tell that's not real by the hairline. You can. But that's the first time that says you are, shut up. Shut up. I've watched Tom Cruise for 30 years, man. It's not his hair. Real thing. <laughs> I mean, uh. It's all the real thing. Like, look at this, right? So I'm going to take it and I'm going to do playback speed at 0.25. I'll, I'll mute it so it doesn't sound weird. And I want to show how he moves his hand across his face. 
This is not real. Again. It like barely even fucks up. It barely even fucks up. Even like even the shadows. That's nuts, right? It, it, it was well edited. Yeah, this is incredibly well edited. And so, uh, yeah, do, is that for frames? Oh, really? Oh my god, I've never seen this before. Look at this. This is incredible. Look at this. I didn't know you could do this per frame. Look at that. Look at that shit, bro. Like, that's unbelievable. Yeah, bottom right corner. Bottom right corner. I mean, like, what I'm saying is that... Here's the thing, is we've seen this kind of stuff a, a lot. And, like, now we're seeing it with Unreal. And what I'm saying is that... We are very close. If, like... And, like, I'll tell you one thing, right? There are a lot of videos of, like, Biden and I've seen of, like, Hillary Clinton. And, like, my mom would show me this stuff, right? And if people were, like, convinced that this was a fake Hillary Clinton. This was a fake Biden. It's actually not a real person. And like they get into this stuff and, and they're no, like, I, I'm serious. Like, look this up. Um, look, look, I'm just going to look up, um, fake, uh, Biden, uh, QAnon. Oh yeah. They, they probably unlisted a lot of these. Fuck. I'd have to look somewhere else. But anyway, like, yeah, I have no idea. But like what I'm trying to get at here is that, yeah, true brother. There are a lot of people that believe this kind of stuff. And it, is it really hard to believe whenever you see a picture like that? You see what I'm saying? Whenever you see a picture of Tom Cruise and he looks just like that, that's what's so nuts about it, man. It's called deep fake. What? No, I, I, I know what a deep fake is. I, I completely understand that. What I'm saying is that deep fakes, what are deep fakes fundamentally? Deep fakes are graphics what is unreal graphics there will be a point in time where these two things converge and more and more and more i think that we're getting there faster and faster and faster that's the point that i'm making i could be fake yeah true exactly and uh they already have bro yeah i mean and people say this all the time like, I've seen people thinking, like, the Ukrainian president is like, it, oh, this is a fake one. And he's like, he's behind a fake background or something like that. I hear this all the time. And it's like, people see this and it just completely fucking, like, shatters their, their world. Because it's like, well, what's real? Like, what's not real, etc., right? And I think more people are going to see this all the time. Deepfakes are pre-rendered uh, pre games in real time, what you mean? Well, and, and that's really what it is. And at a certain point... It's kind of like, so what you're talking about is like a pre-rendered game, right? But think about what they said about this. So they said that they edited the cinematics and they did all the cinematics for the game inside of the engine without being pre-rendered or anything. What I'm saying is that the convergence is coming very soon. And whenever I see technology like this, I, I mean, it, it, it just makes me believe that. Yeah, the convergence is coming extremely soon. I think it's going to be in like less than... Like, I, I think we could have... Maybe not five years, but I would be... Like, I will be very surprised if we don't have quality like this in like... In the next ten years. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, in the next ten years, I will be very surprised if that's not the case. Are you concerned? Well, I think any technology, it's like, are people concerned whenever they invented the gun or the sword or the hammer or anything like that? Uh, the Industrial Revolution. Uh, every single thing, every single bit of technology invented by humans can be used for uh, benevolence or for malice. That's just how it is. Uh, there's no reason to worry about this. It's about, uh, you know, making sure that people use it in the right way. And uh, that's it. Would you pay someone to, to stream and deep fake for me? So, wait a minute. That's a good idea. So I would, I, like, after a while, I wouldn't even have to stream anymore. I could just play the deep fake. That's, that sounds good to me. Yeah, that's great. I just, I sleep in, uh, I wake up, and that's about it. Yeah, perfect. 
It's like you don't even know which streams are real. It's like you're basically, it's like people that run a VOD, but they do it live. So like you think you're watching the same stream as before, man. That is nuts. And uh, who says he isn't already? Yeah, true. The product's personality, not the face of the product's personality, not face of the voice. Um, yeah, but you can program some of that too. Like, and, and again, like you know, this guy kind of acts like Tom Cruise. And I'm not talking about like I'm not talking about this is like a legitimate thing, right? I'm just having a conversation. Is that these things will continue to evolve and get better in general? And uh, that is so fucking crazy, man. Like, what do you guys think of this stuff? Like, I, I I'm I'm really excited to see it. I'll tell you that I, I really am. Like, look at that. That's insane. It, in my opinion, like, I, I think that's absolutely fucking insane. Yeah, that, that's too, too fucking much, man. And, uh, look up Detective, uh, Deep Face Live and try it on stream. It's real time deep fakes. Oh, I'm sure, definitely. Uh, Corridor Digital made a video about voice deep fake a few days ago. Maybe you can watch that. Oh, I've seen some other stuff. I wonder about legal issues. Will videos still be allowed in courts? Um,. So this is kind of what I assume is that there will be reverse engineering that's able to detect particle patterns and pixel patterns in different things in videos, which will allow you to tell if they're deep fake or not. But the technology for that will be on like a forensic level. That's kind of what I would assume. And, and like, obviously, there's always going to be a... um. Uh, th th there's, a, it's, there's always an arms race, right? Because, like, people do, there is a lot of money in many ways. You can easily see this, right? How uh, there's a lot of money that you can make if you can deep fake something. You see what I'm saying? Everything is a simulation. We're just advancing and bubbling inside of it. That's the way it seems like to me, right? Uh, you have to attract a video engineer to attest, is, is, to attest its authenticity. Well, yeah, but, I mean, any sort of courtroom could do that. Uh, but, I mean, I do think that, yes, video evidence in general is becoming less and less credible, too. Uh, I think that's definitely true. But, I mean, in general, I feel like the videos that I'm the most skeptical of are the ones that look like they got shot from a video camera in 1998 recording the sky. And it's like, oh, this is a UFO. It's like, how do you know that's not just a, a, a you know, a street light? Something like that. And so, yeah, I mean, two-minute paper channel AI, they have crazy AI. Uh, agelessness is a challenge of Unreal 5. They're far behind. Too easy to see it's Unreal, but maybe that's the point. Well, I think that it's going to continue getting better, and that's what I'm really trying to get at here. Is like, this one right here is... Uh, well, let's look. Let's look. Um, so this is... Uh, the scene here was... Uh, Matrix. Yeah, so like, let's see if it's like him looking directly forward. Or just see if I can find a, find a picture where it shows his face. Okay, there we go. It, it, it's getting there, man. It's getting there. It's getting a lot fucking better. Yeah, there's a video comparing both. Yeah, the glasses. Yeah, the hair is on bad. Put it on HD. Uh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Let me go ahead and do uh, quality uh, HD. That's pretty fucking good. Uh, and this one's already on HD. They'll use this technology for celebrity porn? Yep, that's right. Uh, I would not be surprised. So this is what we've got to look forward to, boys. It's going to be crazy. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a whole lot. Tom Cruise one looks better than Star Wars. That's fine. Then, like, I'm, I'm okay with that. But, like, what I'm saying is that this kind of stuff is going to get bigger and better over time. That's all I'm saying. The Unreal Engine stuff is fucking incredible. I'm going to look at some stuff on Reddit, but I want to just make sure that I... I re-emphasize this like I, I whenever I was a kid I got really into animation and I taught myself macromedia flash I competed in like a like things for that and um, I don't know like a, it was like a contest for that and uh, I, I did animation whenever I was like 12 years old right and it was like 11 to like 15 or so that's whenever I did animation basically all of my all of my things that I would do pretty much ended whenever I started playing World of Warcraft right that was about it and I, I went really, really hard with animation. And I can only imagine if I saw this trailer whenever I was 12 years old, I would want nothing more than to download Unreal that day and only do that forever. Like, that's the way I would feel. Like, I, I would be like, this is, this is all I want to do right now. Like, I, this is my new game. You know what I mean? Cause like that's kind of how I treated it. Is like I was like Macromedia Flash. This is like a new game that I'm playing. I'm trying to like beat the game by being really good at it. 
And, uh, yeah, that's so fucking cool. I did download Unreal? Yeah, yeah, sure. And, uh, Asma on animating stream? You don't do animations in Unreal? No, no, uh, no, you don't. But, like, and I don't even know, like, what you really want to call that. But, like, what I'm saying is that it's something that, like, I'm sure there are kids out there, and that's what I think is so cool about this. Kids out there, young people, even people my age, right? It's not, like, uh, you know, age exclusive. But I think that there are going to be people out there that have never really thought about this, and they see this, and they're like, holy fuck, maybe I should do this myself. You do? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, all I'm saying is that it's a, uh, uh, it's a really cool thing.